Well, bless you. Have you used the word bless recently? Well, bless the Lord my soul. You, most of you were singing. I didn't actually spot anyone not, but yes, we've used it in our praise. Blessing our God. That's an incredible thought that we might even bless our God, our maker. But have you used, do you ever use the word bless? When someone's, so how many people say bless you when someone sneezes? Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's very good, very good. And what about bless? Do you say that? <laughs> Is that just the young people that say bless? Anyone do that? I must do it occasionally, yes. Or even bless you as a kind of thank you. Yeah? Or, have we got a slide? Maybe. I'll. Well, I'm blessed. When I looked that up on the internet, it really didn't have it. I eventually found it as an archaic phrase. So there you are. If you say, well, I'm blessed, you're being a bit archaic. I don't think I say it very often, but that kind of surprise. Well, I'm blessed. We've seen so-and-so in church today. I'm blessed. We use the word, or maybe we don't. But today I want us to focus on that wonderful word, bless. Or blessed, or blessed. In the next, many blessings. I know the old, count your many blessings, count your blessings one by one. But it, it is part of the Christian life, the thanksgiving. We want to say thank you to our God. Even on the bad days, we find there is a blessing, perhaps in the, the simplest thing, a, a cup of tea made for you, or a beautiful flower, or the sense that God is with you even on those dark, hard days. We've been blessed in the last oh, almost three years by many photographs that people have sent in and we've included, and Tim and Simon have done this amazing job of collecting photos and showing them at the beginning and the end of worship, and I feel blessed by that. And there's just a few of them up there. Uh, a sunset, I think that's a sunset from the Mance Garden, actually. So, uh, certainly, we've had some beautiful sunsets not so long ago. The lichen, the first signs of spring, and the first January king, da daffodils, and of course, scripture, the Bible in the centre. Many, many blessings. Anyone want to share a blessing? Yes, Rosemary. Six blessings. Right, six. And you're even more blessed that, that Steve is here in the back, back row and you can collar him after worship. So let's call it seven blessings for Rosemary in worship leaders. <laughs> be ready to be blessed by Rosemary, Steve. Any other blessings you want to share? Yes. Samuel made an amazing apple crumble. And were you allowed to eat it? Or? Oh, excellent. I'll keep up on the apple crumble, one of my favourites. Could you do a great big one for the church sometime? <laughs> Never again. <laughs> it's a traumatic experience. Oh, it, it gets easier once uh, crumble is, is the classic. The blessing of a good pudding. Any other blessings you want to share? Me. Oh, yes, Andrew. So Kate was a real blessing to you and you want to bless Kate. So thank you, Andrew. 
and it's great to see you here today and thank you for all your work. You've been a real blessing on Wednesday for our cafe, so bless you too. And Julia? Rebecca phoned last night. One of your children actually phoned you. Yes, I know. Well, actually, our blessing today is seeing uh, my son Tom and daughter-in-law Helena uh, later today going for an evening meal. So to see them and to see how her bump is growing will be a blessing. Many, many blessings. Let's just have the other slides quickly. Blessed are. We're going to hear the blessings of Jesus, the Beatitudes, as our key reading today. Blessed are the poor, or the poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who thirst, hunger and thirst for righteousness and justice. Blessed. Jesus wanted to share those Amazing blessings. Even blessed are the mourn because they will be comforted. And then, bless you, yes, bless you when you sneeze. Uh, according to the internet, and this is another, um, maybe a myth, but people say bless you when you sneeze because your heart stops for a millisecond. No, it doesn't. They might say bless you because of the plague of, some, uh, of the past and protecting you from, uh, from one more virus. Yes. Certainly I don't think they, uh, 16th century uh, people would be talking about milliseconds. Be a blessing. That's the key challenge today, and especially when we come to our church meeting, how will we be a blessing to each other? And lovely to hear that. And a blessing to our community. And one final slide, a blessing. We can be a blessing, and we are being a blessing to two children, Christian and Mary, and others I know you are supporting and I was speaking to Ian Charles from Compassion this week, and he sent this little video of how the story of one woman, child, who was blessed and now is a blessing to others. Let's see that video now. We just celebrated my son's third birthday, and it was wonderful. The day of his birthday, my husband and I went to his room and we told him that we have a special surprise for him. And when he came down from the stairs, his eyes lit up. My name is Amor, and I grew up poor in the Philippines. My parents were loving and kind, but there are many days when we didn't have enough money for food and our basic needs, let alone for things like new clothes, school supplies, or birthday presents. Poverty is really the lack of hope, the lack of hope that tomorrow will be better than today. I remember even as a child being aware of how poor we were, which is why I'll never forget the best birthday gift I've ever received. My mom was so excited to hand me a wrapped gift and I was so happy I opened it immediately and I saw the best dress I've ever seen. Instead of saying thank you, I asked my mom how much she spent on it because I did not want them to spend all of our money for food on this gift for me. But my mother said, Amor, your sponsor Aaron sent you money for birthday gift and and your compassion center helped me pick up the perfect gift for you i love that dress i was so proud to have something so nice that i wore that dress when i was honored as the top student in my third grade class it may not have been a big deal for my sponsor to send me a birthday gift but for me it made me feel proud it made me feel a sense of self-worth that matched what I was always told by my pastor and my compassion teachers. They always reminded me, you have a beautiful future ahead of you. You have hope ahead of you because God has a beautiful plan for your life. 
So to my sponsor, Aaron, and to each and every sponsor who gives a gift to make their sponsor child feel so special on his or her birthday, thank you. You are helping a child know what it feels like to live in the promise of God, that he has a future and a hope for all who trust in him. And you are helping mothers and fathers to celebrate their children and to provide for them in a way that every parent wishes they could. God bless you for helping children feel like they have more than enough. Such a moving story. And we send birthday gifts to Mary and to Christian. And we hope and pray they will be blessings to those children and families. And equally, it's wonderful to receive Amor's blessing today. A few words from the Psalms. Psalm 15. And this is a, a challenge to share the blessings of God. The message puts it like this. God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on your guest list? Walk straight. Act right. Tell the truth. Don't hurt your friend. Don't blame your neighbor. Despise what's despicable. Keep your word, even when it costs you. Make an honest living. Never take a bribe. You'll never get shut out if you live like this. May we share the blessing of God and be a blessing to others. As I said, the week of prayer for Christian unity has just come to an end. And one of the key verses for that week, that eight days of prayer, was Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And uh, Abigail read that at the celebration service that began that week. It's also the reading set for today, but rather than just one verse, we have the, the background in all eight verses. And it reminds us that God's blessing is not about words, but about actions that change and transform society. Let's listen for God's word. The first eight verses of Micah 6. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains, let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gil Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord? and bow down before the exalted God. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? 
He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And thanks be to God for his holy word. That amazing picture of God calling upon the mountains to be his witnesses as he brings this case against his people for the ways they have trodden down justice and mercy and strayed from their God. And then it moves to God not wanting sacrifices to make it all better, not rivers of oil or thousands of rams, but changed lives, that simple instruction to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And so we use a prayer as we reflect on that reading. What does it mean to act justly today? Lord, guide us in your way of justice. What does it mean to love mercy? Lord, guide us in your way of mercy. What does it mean to walk humbly with our God? Lord, guide us in our journey with you. Deepen within us faith, hope and love. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now we hear our gospel reading, the Beatitudes, the blessings. Reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. 